Let me show you guys how I made my pollo in salsa criolla for my panes con pollo, also known as Salvadorian sandwiches. We're going to begin by making a marinade for our chicken thighs. I'm going to use sazon total, which is a seasoning with all kinds of herbs. We're also going to use garlic, salt, pepper, cumin, the juice of one orange, a little bit of mustard, some Worcestershire sauce, and then we marinate this overnight. On my comal, I'm going to grill four tomatoes, half of a bell pepper, a quarter piece of onion, four garlic cloves, and a chile guajillo. I'm also going to toast a small bolillo, and this is going to be so it can thicken up the sauce. We're also gonna need relajo which is the name of all the spices we're gonna need it comes with a little baggie of achote for color then i give that a quick toast and set that aside once our chicken has marinated we're gonna give it a quick sear for color then we transfer our chicken to our pot where it's gonna finish cooking just add a little bit of water a celery stock a little bit of cilantro a small piece of onion some chicken bouillon and salt then i cover it up and let this simmer for about 20 minutes after 20 minutes i remove the herbs that we add to our stock put it in my blender along with the tomatoes the peppers and all of the spices that we toast i'm blending this in sections because it was a lot of it and it didn't fit in my blender also gonna add that bread that we toasted and that achiote powder using the same stock we're gonna blend everything once everything has blended you're gonna add that salsa criolla into that chicken and the rest of that broth mix everything together cover it up and let this simmer for another 20 minutes and it's ready i just shred it up and i begin to stuff all of my panes and that's it guys hope you like this recipe bye Let's pack today's lunchbox for my friends and followers. Today we're making them a Big Papa wannabe Chick-fil-A burrito with spicy, crispy chicken tenders. I'm gonna begin by marinating my chicken using buttermilk, hot sauce, pickle juice, and eggs. And I cover it up, let this marinate overnight. The next day in the morning, I have a spicy coating ready to coat my chicken. Coat my chicken tenders, then I put it in my deep fryer until it gets small, and crispy. To go inside the Big Papa burrito, we're also gonna make them a creamy macaroni and cheese. I'm gonna add more cheese on top, a little bit of panko coating because I didn't have any breadcrumbs, and into the oven it goes I'm also making them a fresh copycat version of the chick-fil-a sauce then i begin to assemble their burritos i'm gonna add a bed of macaroni and cheese then i add some more cheese our spicy crispy chicken tenders a couple of waffle fries then i drizzle it with that wannabe chick-fil-a sauce i'm also adding a couple slices of bacon some tomato and some lettuce then i roll it up make sure i don't bust in my face wrap it up in some parchment paper and then i cut it in half for them i honestly didn't even know how to grab the burrito it was huge but this is what it looks like i'm just gonna wrap it in some foil put it in the paper box with a side of extra sauce and burning boho hot sauce to go along with the burrito they also got the option to get a side of loaded waffle fries i just add a little bit of cheese nacho cheese and then i sprinkled it with some crumbled bacon for a little bit of color and freshness we're gonna add a little bit of green onion for the drink i was gonna make them the strawberry lemonade but i burnt my strawberry syrup i decided to make them a passion fruit lemonade that's it guys i'm just gonna hurry my ass up get everything ready for them so they can come and pick up during lunch time bye Let me show you guys how I made my passion fruit lemonade. Here I'm peeling four lemons because I find that whenever making lemonade, using the whole lemon makes the lemonade taste more like lemonade than just juicing them. Just make sure that you remove most of the white part or your lemonade will be bitter. Always reserve some fruit for garnish. Then I put them into my blender with a little bit of water and then blend until smooth with seeds and all. Who cares? We're gonna strain this anyways. And I pour everything to my three-quart pitcher with half a cup of sugar, mix everything together so the sugar dissolves. And I fill up my pitcher halfway with ice before adding water. So initially, this was supposed to be the strawberry lemonade from Chick-fil-A. So the lemonade was meant to be a little under-sweetened because I was gonna finish sweetening it up with the strawberry syrup but i got a phone call forgot about the damn syrup and when i looked it was burnt i had to think fast and i knew i had a passion fruit so i was like okay lemonade passion fruit sounds amazing that's what we're doing so i put about a cup of passion fruit and a cup of sugar a little bit of water and then i just mixed like crazy dumped everything into the lemonade and then i mix now this is the perfect time for you to check for sweetness if it needs more sugar add more sugar if it's too sweet just add more water to garnish my cup i dipped it in a little bit of rim dip a little bit of tahine and then i fill up my favorite cup with ice add a little bit of lemon slices and then pour yourself some delicious and refreshing passion fruit lemonade i did add another slice of lemon to my rim because you already know garnish don't stop and a matching straw and there you have it guys passion fruit lemonade hope you like this recipe bye
Let's pack today's lunchbox for our friends and followers. Today I'm making them a big papa chile relleno tortas with asada. I'm gonna begin by marinating my meat. I'm gonna use lemon pepper, sazon total, a little bit of dos pendejos seasoning. I've been loving that seasoning. Also adding half a beer and then I blended a quarter piece of onion with a couple garlic cloves, peppercorns, and lemon juice. Then I mix and marinate overnight. Then the next day in the morning, I just pan fry my meat. Here I have my chile poblanos. I already peeled and deceived them. Just stuff them using a mixture of chihuahua cheese and mozzarella cheese. Add my asada and a little bit of Oaxaca cheese. Then I close Close them up using the same amount of toothpicks on all the chiles. That way I know how many toothpicks to take out and nobody chokes on toothpicks. And I whip up my egg batter, coat my chiles on flour. That way the batter sticks. Do not forget that part, guys. And we fry them up until they're golden brown on both sides. Now I'm going to butter up my buns. Make sure they're nice and crispy. The bottom bun's going to get a layer of refried beans. Then I add a little bit more asada because our chile has asada. A little bit of lettuce and tomato to make this torta somewhat healthy. And I add the big papa chile relleno with more cheese melted on top. Add a little bit of guacamole to Top it off with my top bun, wrap it up with some parchment paper, and then I split it in half for them. And then this is what the torta looked like from the inside. This one's the mini version, and even though it's the mini version, it was still pretty big. I'm adding the salsa on the side, only because it's ghost pepper and habanero, so just in case they want to join the birdie buckle session, they can do it on their own risk. For their drink, I made them a strawberry passion fruit lemonade. Today was also one of my followers' husband's birthday, and she asked for a special lunch for him because she wanted to surprise him. So this one was for him. And that's it, guys. Now I'm just gonna hurry my ass up, get everything ready for them, load it everything up in my truck and then I dropped it off during lunchtime. So Jose, your wife wants to wish you a happy birthday and welcome to the Dirty 30s. Bye! Let me show you guys how to make these cheesy arepas colombianas like the ones they make in the Disney movie Encanto. So big bowl, you're gonna add a cup of corn masa, specifically this type of masa. You're also gonna add half a cup of warm milk and half a cup of warm water. Add a pinch of salt and then you mix. Once your masa has come together, you're going to add two tablespoons of butter and then you're gonna mix again. The butter is gonna make the masa super soft. Once your butter is fully incorporated into the masa, you're going to add cheese and lots of it. Don't worry about over mixing your masa here, guys. That is actually a good thing. It makes your masa nice and soft. You're gonna grab little balls of dough and then we're gonna form them into a disc and you add more cheese inside close it up and form it into another disc again smack it from hand to hand and then using your fingers you're gonna make a perfect little disc and don't mind me guys i was super excited making this recipe then i butter up my pan add my arepas and then make them crispy on both sides i must admit this was our first time trying arepas but let me tell you it won't be our last everyone in this household loved them i mean who wouldn't take a look at the inside of this arepa that's it guys hope you like this recipe bye Let's pack today's lunchbox for my friends and followers. Today we're making them surf and turf loaded potatoes. I'm going to begin by cooking our potatoes and we're going to poke some holes because we don't want them to bust in the oven. Then I butter up their buns with a little bit of oil, season them up, give them a nice little rub-a-dub-dub -dub before we wrap them up in some foil, stick them in the oven at 400 degrees for about an hour. Now you have to work with these potatoes while they're hot. So as soon as they come out of the oven, be super careful because they are hot. Using the same foil I was wrapped in, I make my potatoes some type of a car seat just to protect it during transportation. Using my spoon, I'm going to dig up my potatoes and put everything in a bowl along with some cheese, butter, cream cheese, sour cream, seasoning of choice, and a little bit of green onions. And I mix everything together and restuff our potato. And don't be stingy. You stuff that potato till you can't no more. Then I add a little bit more cheese, stick it back into my oven until the cheese gets nice and melted. Like this. Then I make a little cavity of some sort into my potato so I can fill it up with carne asada and lots of it too don't be stingy and i add a little bit of queso fresco some fresh pico de gallo i'm also gonna add big old dollops of guacamole and sour cream i know i should have drizzled them but whatever and if you think i was done here i am not i'm gonna make some stuffed shrimps wrapped in bacon to a big bowl i'm gonna add some chorizo cream cheese and cheese of choice i mix it up stuff it to the back of my shrimpies and then i wrap them in some bacon Stick them in the oven at 350 degrees for about 10 minutes until they get nice and crispy and then i just put them on my potato and i add two habanero ghost pepper salsas for their drink i made them a strawberry cotton candy agua fresca and that's it guys now i'm just gonna get everything ready for them so they can come and pick up during lunchtime bye